Uh, my name is Roger Narayan. I'm an associate professor in the Joint Department of Biomedical Engineering between the University of North Carolina and North Carolina State University. And I work on various aspects related to laser processing of uh, bioceramics. Uh, one of the techniques which we look at is a pulse laser deposition, which is a, a thin film uh, technique uh, which can be used to create uh, diamond-like carbon thin films, hydroxyapatite thin films, and, and films which have unique uh, biological properties. Uh, and a second technique which, which, that we look at is uh, laser direct writing. Uh, we look at various approaches for either micromachining surfaces or building up surfaces at the microscale regime. And this includes a work on bioceramics. Our third technique is a two-photon polymerization, uh, which we do in conjunction with colleagues at Laser Zentrum Hanover in Germany. And that technique involves, a, uh, essentially, it's a variation on a stereolithography uh, that uh, allows us to create structures uh, for medical applications at very small length scales, at, at one micron uh, length or, le or less. And so you have the ability to uh, uh, create structures with uh, unique applications that cannot be made through, through other conventional techniques. And, and we looked at applications including microneedles, patient-specific medical devices, and uh, scaffolds for tissue engineering. Microneedles are devices that uh, can be used to deliver protein-based drugs or DNA-based drugs uh, such as insulin, insulin is a protein, uh, through the skin. One of the problems with uh, drugs that are made out of DNA or proteins is that they can't be absorbed through the gut and so they're typically given intravenously and uh, uh, that is uh, okay in cases where one's in the hospital but it becomes very tedious if one is uh, outside of uh, the hospital or without a skill uh, medical care and so the ability to have a, a device which is portable and allows for uh, metered uh, diffusion of uh, or metered transport of, of a pharmacologic agent through the skin and into uh, the body would be of great benefit for a variety of chronic medical conditions like diabetes but also cancer and other conditions so in fact we've uh, looked at creating devices microneedle devices uh, through uh, two-photon polymerization uh, that uh, allow, and which, which have unique properties for uh, drug uh, uh, delivery. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, a rapid prototyping technique allows one to do is to, to modulate the, the, the design uh, and also the, the materials that are used to fabricate the device. And, and that is of great benefit when trying to choose the appropriate design for a, a market deal that then goes through towards eventual commercialization. A lot of the, the problems with current microneedles are, are, are that they have very poor fracture properties when uh, pressed against the, the skin. And so if you, one doesn't want to have a, a device that's used, especially on, on a day-in, day-out basis, that, that has a fracture problem and can cause then a, a injury or poor cosmetic result. And so the ability to use rapid prototyping to finalize the design of a microstructured medical device and then, then uh, use, either use that device directly or use that as, as a, a prototype type for eventual implementation is of great benefit. One of the things that we've been looking at is uh, the de development of scaffolds for tissue engineering. Tissue engineering is a technique which is uh, about a dozen years old and it allows you to create uh, substitutes for uh, tissues that are, are, are damaged or injured in, in, in some way. And uh, this technique um, allow, usually involves taking a scaffold which is uh, either a material that's uh, synthetic or organic, but it's essentially uh, uh, the basis on which the cells are grown, cells are seeded, uh, so we're, rather I should say cells are first seeded and then grown onto. And, and uh, essentially uh, this cell, cell seeded construct is, is uh, placed in, in a bioreactor or, or, or it could even be placed directly in the body, but it's typically placed in a situation where the cells are allowed to prolifer proliferate and, and the, the construct is, is, is uh, kind of matured to a, a situation where it's uh, uh, reasonably functional and then it's implanted in the site where it's needed in the body. So the development of, uh, of tissue engineering really relies on the development of new scaffolds or new constructs on which the cells can be grown. 
And so one of the th advantages of a rapid prototyping approach is that you can then create the, 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 uh, the scaffold that precisely fits the site of injury, and that's of great benefit. But also you can, you can modulate all the parameters of, that are, are relevant, so the mechanical properties, the, the microstructure, the nanostructure. Well, uh, th these are all of great interest to, to people in tissue engineering, and, and so the ability to, to um, modulate these parameters and to optimize them before uh, going on, going forward into uh, eventual commercial implementation is of great benefit. I, I know of a lot of people who are excited about tissue engineering. I think that they, 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 a lot of people are talking about, event, in fact, I've seen personally a lot of venture capitalists get very excited about this. And so uh, I think that if, if all goes well, we could actually see uh, small scale trials uh, within the next five years and then larger scale trials and then eventual widespread use within the next 10 to 20 years. And I was just at a a, a meeting very recently where a lot of the, the devices that have been tested in animals and, and uh, have, have uh, been uh, kind of uh, demonstrated to, to venture capital individuals and, and other researchers. And I would say um, most of the devices that are currently being developed are on a, a relatively small scale. I think that it will take probably 10 to 20 years until one gets to, to uh, kind of the larger scales. One of the big problems actually in getting to a large scale is to try to develop uh, a good blood supply that can uh, uh, support all of the, 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 the cells that are, are seated on these constructs. So getting to these large length scales remains a problem. If you look at what currently has been developed up until now, it's usually at these smaller length scales where uh, diffusion of oxygen and nutrients is, is much more uh, readily done.